Hello people. So, since you seem to like the last video about uh, the CNC part uh, from start to finish, I'm gonna give you another one, which might be even a little bit more interesting. And uh, this time I'm gonna start it even before the start actually. So I'm gonna show you a little bit of the computer work as well, but not much, since I know you don't like that very much. So, I have a piece like this to repair. And what's wrong with this piece, as you can see, uh, this edge or face right here has been banging against another, resulting in bad dents. And this is now um, beyond repair. So because otherwise you would need to weld fill this and I know that would uh, distort the straightness of the whole piece so I don't, I really don't want to do that plus I have no idea what kind of aluminum this is by the way this is a part of a laser cutting machine it's a really expensive part actually of a really expensive machine so um, and this is what the other side looks like and you can see there's some banging marks here as well focus so it's pretty beat up <coughs> and here's a piece that's gonna sit in this hole right here it's a pretty tight fit it's like 200 of a millimeter and my solution is right here so, actually, first I'm gonna do this. So, this is what this part's gonna look like after I have destroyed it. So, I'm gonna mill the bad part out and then I'm gonna put in this insert. And I will make this from 41 for the steel. Actually, I'm not quite sure if it was 4340, but uh, a premium steel brand anyways. So I'm gonna mill this insert. Um, and I'm not still quite sure whether it's gonna be shrink fit or am I gonna glue it on. Uh, but it's also gonna have four M4 screws. There won't be any huge forces. Uh, on this piece, but I still want to be sure that it holds in place. It might actually be in enough to make it a slight slide fit and just uh, attach it with, with these screws. I think I'm gonna have to call the customer and ask what he thinks about that. But uh, after I'm done with that, Let's go to the machine and make some parts. So, from this to this and this. And this has to be done in two operations, sadly. So, I can do almost everything from this side, but then I have to flip it to mill this this hole right here. I might also do that on the lathe, but we will see. Okay, the setup is now done. I have the piece um, in the two vices. And I made a slight change to the stock. Um, I just uh, milled off the end so that I could just fit them in the vice. And now the program thinks the stock is completely round, so it's cutting air right here, but that's just fine. And all the tools are set also. So I have three different drills. One right here, and by the way, do you like my my makeshift drill chuck holder? But it actually works just fine with this half inch or 12.5 mm drill. So, three drills, uh, two end mills face mill and an M8 tap, which is right here. So, I think 
we should be all set to go. Let me load the program in. Okay, here we go. Okay, tool change. It's moving pretty slow because I have the rapid set as slow as they go. Okay, now two holes all set to go. Okay, you can't see anything, so I'm stopping here. And so, as you can see, uh, I'm back drilling and retracting every single time. It takes longer, but it's it's a safer process. No rigid tapping. Again, I'm using a a true hole tap because I don't have a, a spiral tap for bottoming holes. But I have plenty of space for the chips to go, so it should be just fine. And also another thing, this tap is meant for aluminum. And my stock for M8 taps is, is very, very bad. I have like, I think I have over a hundred taps in total but I didn't have any correct MA taps all went fine okay now drilling a large hole in the center so I don't have to ramp down uh, with the end mill no roughing Two millimeter step over. Ten millimeter solid combo then mill. Badly placed coolant nozzles. Almost no coolant is making it to the drill. Okay, this is just drilling. Okay, now it's finishing time. And I think I'm gonna switch on the coolant now. Trying to improve surface finish. It's now clearing both the floors and the walls. And this is pretty boring. And it's gonna take a while. Okay, to me it looks pretty good.
Okay, I think it's time for some measurements and and then it's time to flip it and do operation number two. Okay, so I was shooting for the nominal sizes with this uh, this part and then the aluminum part I'm gonna mill maybe 200 oversize. So everything here should be zero and check it out. This is just one measurement, but um, I think it's pretty good. Okay, now operation two. So the piece is flipped and I'm facing off the stop. I'm going really slow because the piece is not very securely in the, in the vise. Um, I'm gonna finish it on the lathe. Okay, the piece is now chucked up in the lathe and I have removed the rest of the material. I have like uh, 5 to 10 hundreds of a millimeter left, which I will remove later. I think it looks pretty good. And as you can see, I'm chucking it on the the oldest lip of the part. I have ground or actually just turned uh, slight reliefs right here in the jaws, at the end of the jaws for exactly holding work like this. And it has a run out of about 500 of a millimeter uh, radially. Actually it's only like 200 of a millimeter but that 500 of a millimeter is too much, so I'm gonna mill it uh, on the milling machine to finish the bore, I mean.